Hey, hey, and welcome back to another video of learning Java 2D game programming. So in our last video, we gave our UI containers children of type UI components. So now a container can have UI components inside of them. And since the UI container is also a UI component, a container can now have a container, which can have a container, which can have a container, and so on and so on. But we would like other UI components as well. So in this video, we are going to make something called a UI text. So we can finally see something on the screen. So let's get to that. First, find your UI package and create a new class. And I'm going to name mine UI text. So the UI text extends UI component. Let's implement these abstract methods. All right, let's think about what members we need. We're going to need quite a lot. So the most obvious thing is, of course, the text that will be that we will be displaying. And we also want to keep the font size. We want to keep the font style, which is if it's bold or italic. But I'm going to use plain today. And we need to keep the font family, which is you know Times New Roman or Comic Sans or Helvetica or those types of things. So th what we would normally just say is the font is actually the font family. And we also want to keep the color. OK. And I also want a drop shadow. But I'm going to keep a Boolean in here so that you can turn it off if you want to. I'm going to have mine on. And therefore, we need to know the drop shadow offset, how many pixels it should be offset from the text. And also, let's give it some shadow color. I'm going to also keep a font object down here, which will calculate from these things. So let's create a constructor. Let's just take in the string. And these other things, let's give them some default values. So starting with the font size, I'm going to set mine to 24. I am going to set font style to font.plane. And you can see here uh, the font class has some static uh, variables that you can use. So you can see here plain and bold and italic, but I'm going to use plain. And then let's set the font family. And here you can set something like Helvetica. This is a string representation of what you want. There are also a couple of them uh, defined in the font class in the same way as the style was. So you can have dialogue, monospaced, sans serif, serif. Um, but you can just, if you'd like Comic Sans, you'd write something like this and you get Comic Sans. Uh, I, however, have downloaded and installed a font called, um, what was it, Arcade Classic, I think. And that's the one that you can see on my thumbnails. So uh, if you would put this here and someone else's computer didn't have it, this would default to some other font. I'm not sure which one, just some default font. You can put anything you want in here. I'm going to set Arcade Classic. And if you want to download it, I will put a link in the description as well. All right, let's move on. So the color, I'm just going to set that to white. Color white. Awesome. So for the drop shadow, let's see, drop shadow. I'm going to set mine to true because I'm going to always want it and drop shadow offset, I'm going to set it to two pixels. And the shadow color, I'm going to make a new color of 140 for R, G, and B, which will give us this gray. All right, I think that's it. So let's talk about the update. So right now, I am going to calculate the font every update. and. I mean, you probably only need to calculate the font as well as calculate the size, which we'll also do whenever something changes. So if it hasn't changed from the last update, we wouldn't have to. But that would mean that we would need to call this calculate method from every setter that we have. And if we need to optimize, if it's a problem that we do these calculations every update, we will optimize later. But we won't do it until it's a problem. 
So keep it simple first and foremost. Only optimize things when you have to. That way you don't waste time and energy for something that you don't even know if it's going to add any value. So we're not doing that now. We are calculating every update. So create the font and calculate the size. All right, let's create this method. So this is just a new font and it needs the font family, font style and font size. I'm pretty sure. Yes. All right. And then let's calculate the size. So here is something a little hacky. We need something called a font metrics. And it, of course, keeps track of metrics of the font. So things like how long will a string be? Because the strings will be different uh, with depending on what font you're using. You can't really just use the font size and figure out the width because if it's bold, it will be wider or different fonts will be wider. So you need this font metrics. It will do this for you. But in order to get a font metrics, I create a temporary canvas and this feels a little hacky. Uh, if you know of a better way to get a font metrics than to create this object just for that reason, then please write it in the comments. But for now, this will do. So let's just do get font metrics and pass in our font, which we calculated. Now that we have that, we can set our size. So new size and import it. So what we want for our size is let's first use our font metrics, string width, and we have our string. And then we need to add the horizontal padding. And for the height, let's do font metrics, get height, and the height does not depend on our string. Of course, it's only the font. So get padding, get vertical. And then let's close that off. So that should be it for that. Okay, so we've updated, we've calculated the things that we need. And now all we have to do is get the sprite. And you've done this before. So let's see, buffered image, image. We need to cast the buffered image and import that. And let's see, we have image utils. Let's create a compatible image of the size that we have. And let's make it bit masked. All right, let's get the graphics from that. So graphics image create graphics. Now we have the graphics. Awesome. Let's now set the font. And we have the font. Now, if we want a drop shadow, we have to draw that first so that we later draw the text on top of it. So if drop shadow, then let's say, yeah, let's just do it here because it's only going to be two rows anyway. Otherwise, we would have Let's not start there. Uh, let's just say draw string. We give it the string, which is text. And now we need to give it the position where it should draw it. And for the left, let's just do padding get left for the horizontal direction. And for the vertical direction, this differs a little bit from how you draw other things on your graphics. When you draw the text, it draws the text from the bottom left instead of the top left, which is how things usually get drawn, which means that we need to add the font size. So just say font size and then add the padding top. All right. Now that we've done that, I just remembered we have to first, of course, set the color so we get the right color. So shadow color. All right, that's it. moving on to the actual text. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but without the offset, which I of course forgot to add. So drop shadow offset, which was the entire point. All right, there we go. I'm sorry for that. Now we do the same thing without the offset. So first set the color to the text color, and then let's draw the string. And it's the same thing, but without 
the drop shadow offset. So font size plus padding gets top. And then let's do graphics dispose and then return the image. All right, I think this is it. So let's try it out and see if we missed anything. So find your game state. And let's try it. Let's just replace this last container with a new UI text. And I'm going to write, hello, UI world. So let's try that out. And look at that. It worked. So now the third child here is a UI text which says, hello, UI world. So that's awesome. Now, if you want to, you can, first of all, I'm just going to try the light gray here and reduce our padding or yes, our padding to five. And I'm going to check that out. Hmm. So it's not perfectly centered. And I think that is for two reasons. So the first one is I'm going to go to the UI component. I'm going to not have a margin of, sorry, a padding of five. And I'm going to instead put that inside of the UI container. It can have a spacing of five uh, padding, sorry. So this now has a padding of five, but not every UI component does. And that did a little bit. However, there's still some issues. And I think that's actually because of the font, the Arcade Classic font. If we tried to switch the font to something different, let's do that inside of the UI text, because here we have the default font. So let's give it something like font.monospaced. Then it looks a lot better much more centered. So it does have to do with the font that you use. But I'm going to keep it Arcade Classic anyway, because I really like this look. And if you wouldn't, you don't have to have this background color if you don't want to. You can go to the game state. We can give this just a transparent color. So just make it a new color and give it 0, 0, 0 for the RGB and also 0 for the alpha. And then if you check that again, look at that. That is awesome. We can now display text on our screen and it looks quite good as well. So because of how this font works, uh, everything just looks like it's one long word. Uh, so we can of course get around that by adding extra spaces. Hmm. It all depends on what font you use and what you're going for. See, that looks better. But um, I think I'm quite happy with this. So in the next video, we're probably going to start displaying some information that we actually can use. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Hey, doa.